rated at 475 horsepower. It was a win-win situation back then, and it led to a couple mini racing championships. Looking to buy a Cobra? It could cost you up to $5 million. Hmm? Five million? No chance. Five million I buy my entire city. No chance, that's a lot. Today I will be reacting to the top 8 greatest American muscle cars of all time. But before I go into that, can I ask you for one thing? If you can leave a like, thank you so much my friend, this is the best way to show support. If you can subscribe, well in that case, forget about it, you make my day, have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description, you guys end up suggesting this one a couple of times, well, one thing to do, let's play it. Being the number one when it comes to building muscle cars, they have been producing the best muscle cars in the world for decades. Oh. In this video, we're presenting you with the best muscle cars to have ever been produced. Okay. Make sure to watch the video till the end to find out which American muscle car is the most expensive and why it's worth so much. Okay, the most expensive, my friends, real talk, I have no idea. But uh, the most famous, this is a European perspective, take everything with a grain of salt, but the most famous, at least here, is uh, Mustang. Mustang is really, really famous. It's a beautiful, even the, the modern ones are really beautiful. At least I, I like it. But uh, the most expensive, I have no, no idea. One thing that uh, I know for sure is I find those vintage cars, oh, they are so beautiful. The American ones are tremendous, for sure. I mean, I really like them. Hello, and welcome to Blurred. For this video, we will be exploring the greatest American muscle cars ever created. Okay, I'm sorry. I know I'm pausing too much. For but... this video, we will be exploring the greatest American muscle cars Oh, are you kidding me? Come on, this is a beautiful car. I mean, much more beautiful than the cars we have nowadays. I mean, come on. I like it. I like this type of cars quite a lot. Maybe because we never had similar designs here in Europe, but the American ones are so incredible. Ever created. If you're <laughs> interested in other car related videos, make sure to check out our other videos here on Blurred. You can go there after this one. So without wasting any more time, let's now take a closer look at the top American muscle cars we have. Oh, that's found. a Mustang, right? The 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona. Dude, this is so big on the front. What the hell is going on here? Okay, this one I'm not sure, my friends. Dodge Charger Daytona. Okay. On a 1969 Dodge Charger, the Daytona featured a massive wing in the back along with a pointed nose which made fans tremble with excitement when they see it. Okay. It was evident that these muscle cars were out of the norm even back in the 1960s, and fans were highly enthused about them. The Daytona was designed primarily to go faster in NASCAR races. Oh. As NASCAR racing became increasingly popular and cars got faster and faster, Daytona's launch made fans even more interested to see its high performance and style. A retractable headlight, air ducts at the top of the fender, a slippery... Okay, so NASCAR is, is really famous in America still, right? Uh, seems a lot of fun to, to watch if you are into the sport. Would you guys agree with that? Uh? windshield trim around the pillar and a smoothed out rear window treatment were okay among its feet wait sorry for so many pauses but okay. in style a retractable headlight air ducts at the One top second. of the fender okay you know what my friends i was not liking this design at first glance kind of like it now for some reason i don't know that green looks kind of cool i mean i don't know maybe you guys disagree but that that green looks really cool there's so much power on that car, right? <laughs> it's crazy. A slippery windshield trim around the pillar and a smoothed out rear window treatment were oh, among its features. I like it, actually. The most noticeable addition, however, was the high-mounted horizontal stabilizer, often referred to as a wing. In racing trim, in racing trim, these innovations added a cherry on top of a cake and made it stand out from all other muscle cars. Nowadays, <laughs> The Charger Daytona is easily worth more than $150,000. Oh, that's so expensive. 1967 Ford Mustang, Eleanor. De 67? That looks so modern. Oh, the front looks like a car. Uh, 
No, the oh wow. Definitely one of the coolest muscle car creations ever. This 1967 Ford Mustang was made even more famous by Nicolas Cage's Gone in 60 Seconds. It was hand formed with an aluminum body. There is no doubt that the Ford Mustang builder did not miss any details while creating that masterpiece. Dude, this is a masterpiece. I agree. This may be the most beautiful must uh, Mustang I ever saw. Oh, wow. This 1969 Mustang was a six figure wow. professional build that took five years to complete. Instead of adorning the pepper grape. Are you kidding me? This is a tremendous one. Oh, wow. Oh, this is my favorite. I can tell of you. everyone's favorite Hollywood Ford. This pony wore a rich black two stage paint job under sublime charcoal stripes, and it rolls as a thoroughbred head turner that is right at home going on a summer cruise. A clean oh. monochromatic dash made it look more. Oh, I love the red lights with the, with the, Oh, this looks so nice. Oh, wow. Well, maybe I'm overreacting, but this one is I find it beautiful. It's, OK, let's guess the price. If the other was 150k, this is probably like 200k. Mustang may be a bit more expensive. More modern and classy. In addition to traditional instruments, there are push-button ignition controls that control modern air conditioning. A leather-wrapped console is topped with a low car shifter and fresh carpet floats. Cobra-themed floor mats. This was one of the most powerful muscle cars ever made, boasting a high-performance 347 V8 engine. The paint job is stunning, and the yeah. aluminum body is incredible. The original Eleanor is worth millions of dollars. A replica 1967 Mustang Eleanor can go for as much as $350,000. Yeah, never going to have one of those impossible on my budget, but looks amazing. <laughs> Shelby 427 Cobra. This was Shelby Cobra. Okay, different design, but I like it also. The first 427 Cobra built, and it won a most significant Cobra award at the annual Amelia Island Concours. Bruce Canepa owns chassis CSX 2001, which was originally a small block Cobra, but later fitted with the 427 engine. In terms of power, the 427 Cobra was the last and most powerful model ever built by Cobra. Introducing the Shelby 427 1965. This race car has won many championships. Despite oh. many cars having been replaced through the years, the 427 Cobra has stood the test of time and is a choice for every generation. Modifications have been made to many muscle cars over the years, but this was an unalterable choice. The fastest street car on the planet in 1968, there was nothing faster than this monster muscle car. The rawness of the car, the side pipes screaming into your ears, the wind blowing, no side windows, no doors, there was no protection of any kind. Okay, this looks really expensive. Really, really expensive. Uh, after knowing all of those details, maybe half a million. I'm assuming half a million, right? Driving one of these is the most visceral experience you will ever have. The Cobra is extremely lightweight. They weigh around 2,300 pounds. That is shocking when compared to its power. The legendary engine deserves a closer look. In real terms, these were monster motors, rated at 475 horsepower. It was a win-win situation back then, and it led to a couple mini racing championships. Looking to buy a Cobra? It could cost you up to $5 million. Hmm? Five million? No chance. Five million I buy my entire city. No chance. That's a lot. 1976 Pontiac. Wait, what? Okay, I'm a bit... Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. It cost you up to five million dollars. 1976 Pontiac Trans Am. Smokey and the Bandit. Oh. This is beautiful. <laughs> what? Pontiac Trans M Trans M Pontiac Trans M. Uh, damn, this is nice. <laughs> there would be no doubt that the 1976 Pontiac Trans Am was one of the most lovable cars back in the 1970s. 
as it made quite an impression on the screen, a car made famous by the film Smokey and the Bandit. Pontiac manufactured a muscle car known as the Trans Am from 1967 to 2002. It was one of the finest cars produced by Pontiac. Its head-turning looks and performance on the racetrack made the Pontiac Trans Am a masterpiece at that time. There's no doubt that the Pontiac Firebird belongs in the Hall of Fame of classic cars. However, it's the Trans Am model that... This is another crazy one. I don't know if I like... I may, I may like this more than the Mustang, actually. I don't know, the Mustang was incredible. Oh, but I love this. I love this type of lights on the back. Oh. Look, I, I, I don't know a lot about cars, my friends, and I'm not very technical with this type of stuff. So my reactions, they go by mostly by what I think, by the looks. I don't... Oh, but if you look at that... No, I, I don't know that. Um, it's kind of fun that there is a speed limit right there. With the, okay. Truly stands out. If you are looking to purchase a Smokey and the Bandit replica, it will set you back an astounding amount of money. About a hundred thousand mm. dollars. The original Smokey and the Bandit car from Burt Reynolds' personal collection sold for a shocking amount of money. Three hundred and seventeen thousand five hundred dollars. Okay, but the Cobra... Cobra, by the way, in Portuguese means snake. But the Cobra is in a different, uh, uh, le you know, different level. But this one, I mean, no chance I can buy this still, but uh, it's, it's uh, quite more uh, possible. I mean, uh, I, I feel like maybe someone watching me even have one of those. 1969 Pontiac. Dude, this is insane. This one, when I saw that at first, uh, at the beginning, this one looks incredible. Head with black. Oh. Pontiac GTO Judge. So this is the Pontiac GTO Judge. Judge, you have to be a judge to buy this one, okay? This was the fastest judge ever built in the 1960s and was the only judge to be equipped with Ram Air 4 engines. With a 400 horsepower V8 and a 4-speed manual transmission, this 1969 Pontiac GTO Judge is a real-deal factory-built judge. Completely rebuilt and finished in Atoll Blue with parchment vinyl interior and judge decals, it got a complete frame-off restoration. The standard equipment on the Judge included Rally 2 wheels with redline tires, a Hurst shifter, a wood-trimmed steering wheel, a rear spoiler, a rear window defogger, power steering, and front disc brakes. Packed with the options the 1969 GTO came with Judge decals, coupled with a race car-inspired interior with bucket seats, custom console, factory tack and gauge package, power steering, power disc brakes, and factory air conditioning made the GTO one of the greatest Pontiac muscle cars ever built. Dude, that's a lot of things for that uh, time. Looking to buy a GTO? Plan on it setting you back a substantial amount of money. About $100,000 for a well-restored model. Okay. 1979 Plymouth Roadrunner Superbird. Oh, this is another NASCAR car. Uh, I mean, I think all of those could be NASCAR uh, cars, right? Um... Those are a bit, uh, the, you know, I, I I feel like I could drive the, the others. This one, these ones with the long nose, I'm not sure. One of the first things that comes to mind when we think about the 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner Superbird is its enormous rear wing. However, its rear wing should not be its only legacy. Mm. There was much more to this Plymouth than meets the eye. In the 1970s, most muscle cars were built for drag racing, while few were built for circuit racing as NASCAR rules required each model to produce 1,920 road-registered examples for the vehicle to compete. The Plymouth Roadrunner Superbird was made available to the public, despite the Plymouth Roadrunner Superbird being specifically designed as a stock car racer. Its aerodynamic features were developed in a wind tunnel so that the Plymouth Roadrunner Superbird could have the ultimate performance. It was only through the day and night efforts of the builders that the Plymouth Roadrunner Superbird was able to be equipped with three distinct engines. In terms of size and power, the smallest and least powerful engine in the lineup is the 440 cubic inch 7.2 liter V8 engine. Oh, this is the weakest one and, and this 375 horsepower. Holy, let's see the, the, the best one. With 375 horsepower. Incorporating many insane upgrades, 
the Roadrunner Superbird became the boss of NASCAR based on the Plymouth Roadrunner. Even though it shared many design cues with its sister car, the Charger Daytona, the Plymouth Roadrunner Superbird was still easily distinguishable as an impressive racer. Looking to add a Roadrunner Superbird to your garage? Plan on it costing you a ridiculous amount of money, about $375,000. 1987 Buick GNX Despite never being intended to be a high-performance vehicle, the Buick Grand National quickly gained a devoted following of enthusiasts it looks more modern. I mean, makes sense by the age, but... ...enthusiasts because of its aggressive look and low production numbers, and only a few cars in history have ever made this status and recognition so fast. The Grand National has become a performance icon by 1986, and Buick's engineers knew it could be improved. With the Garrett turbocharger, a better intercooler, larger injectors, and a low-restriction exhaust system, they decided to take the engine to the next level. A more aggressive alignment and larger anti-roll bars were also added to the suspension. All okay. these factors combined to produce a rocket that reached 60 miles per hour in just 4.6 seconds and completed the quarter mile in around 13 seconds. And even after 35 years, those aren't bad numbers. Oh my God, for that time, that's insane. And let's take a look at the sound again, sorry. In seconds. And even after 35 years, those aren't bad numbers. Beast. Plan on spending an insane amount of money to own one. Barrett Jackson auctioned a near perfect example of the 1987 Buick GNX for $550,000. Wow. Alpha million. Damn. Okay. Uh, it's amazing, but well. Oh. 2015 Dodge Challenger Hellcat Red Eye. I. Whew. Okay, but this is this is this is a fair new one, right? Phone fifteen, not even ten years ago. Um, well, looks amazing. <laughs> of course, this is different. This is a modern car. This looks amazing. I believe that the 2015 Dodge Challenger Hellcat is one of the best modern muscle cars ever made, as it's got so many features that are unique and renowned for their advanced technology or their novelty. In addition. Many of these features were well received by the public, attracting more buyers and contributing to the publicity of Challenger Hellcat. No attempt was made to hide the fact that it was a muscle car from its appearance, sound, feel, and behavior. This muscle car speaks class. Its beauty is truly unhidden and magical. This is a muscle car. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> okay, this is uh this is beautiful. Um I suspect this one may be a bit cheaper because it's new. Maybe not, but I, I think this is about production numbers, right? Car that everyone dreams of owning one day, or at least riding in once in their lifetime. When building this beast of a muscle car, the major focus was on sheer power. The 6.2 liter supercharged behemoth of a motor is factory rated at nearly 800 horsepower. Combined. I don't even know. I drove a car with uh, 200 horsepower and I thought that was already a lot. It was a bit over 200 actually, but that does not matter. Isn't and With either an automatic or manual transmission and a racetrack tuned suspension allowed this beast to immediately dominate the streets and racetracks. Another feature found in this car is its valet mode, which is used when the owner lends the car out to others. This mode limits the RPM to 4,000 and allows only second gear starts. It also has got the Uconnect access system, which provides maps for driver clarity as well as a Bluetooth connection. The 2015 model also has keyless entry, a new 7-inch gauge cluster, and a new performance electronic shifter. The 2015 Hellcat Challenger was released with most modern technology, the most aggressive body style of its time, Every feature you could dream of and almost 1,000 horsepower changed the game in American muscle cars. Yes, you can buy a 2015 Hellcat for a very reasonable price. You can find some nice examples for about $50,000. Okay, see. It's a lot of money still, but, uh, um, you know, this is quite more uh, possible. <laughs> it's not completely impossible. Uh, I mean, this is a really good car here.
you know, uh, this, this, I mean, but we are looking at an amazing car, so it kind of makes sense. Not too bad considering the cost of the cars on the rest of this list. Comment below on what is the next muscle car that you'll be adding to your garage. So, I don't know, some French car, but not a muscle. <laughs> this was all for today's video. Make sure you have hit the bell icon for up. Oh, I damn, I have finally reacted to those videos, my friends. Um, I wonder if this video will do well or not. But for the ones that are watching until the end, would you guys like more reactions to this type of stuff? For example, I kind of want to see this one. The top, top five rarest Ford Mustangs are worth millions. Millions. Oh, boy. Okay. You know what? Leave me the number five in the comments. Say hello, Andre5. <laughs> Leave me the number of five in the comments if you'd like me to, to react more to this type of stuff. Because I, I can do it, my friends. And um, yeah, you guys decide. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time.